want to encourage more people to cycle and walk, sometimes the infrastructure has to be engineered and, in all honesty, be more intrusive. Real change to our streets. It can be hard to imagine what a very technical and rather dull engineer's drawing will look like once it's actually in place in our neighbourhood. We are so unused to seeing cycle lanes that some people even think that if one is put outside their house, they won't be able to get into their driveway. But as you can see, that's not the case. Talbot Road here in Manchester is just an average suburban street, except it has a bike lane and has for a while. These residents, though, can still get in and out of their drives, no problem. And they can also go to the local shops or into town on their bikes in complete safety. I'm a bit jealous. Some cities have decided to use their green spaces as both walking and cycling thoroughfares. Now this can cause conflict between the different users. So what they've done here in Victoria Park Leicester is very wisely put in a new designated cycle lane next to the existing footpath to avoid upsetting anyone. As this cycle lane right at the front door of the main station demonstrates, Leicester's recent progress is a great example of how any city or town can build an active travel network more or less from scratch and allow space for all ways of getting around. What the council here have shown is that cycling is not just for the continent or the capital. Any local authority can make it work with the right political will, good consultation and most importantly, a coherent long-term plan. The days of do it when convenient must be a thing of the past. When it is needed, infrastructure that helps vulnerable road users navigate major junctions must be built, like here in Wigan. Or this exemplar in Manchester. It's what's known as a Cyclops Junction, and it's how all major junctions should be redesigned. No more cheap, sticking, plaster, badly designed methods that abandon cyclists just when they need the most protection. And in fact, central government have said through their gear change policy that unless you do it like this, they won't fund it. So in other words, if councils want to improve our roads, they have to stick to this standard or they won't get the cash. We have a climate emergency. We have air pollution levels that kill thousands every year. And we have an obesity epidemic. And as we've just seen, we also have the answers in ordinary places all over our region and around the country. Now is the time to look around us and put in place what other towns, cities and regions are already doing. Politicians, planners, engineers and every one of us as individuals. Nothing radical, just what is needed to make our streets, our region and our world a better and safer place for everyone. <laughs>